Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am doing the ultimate comparison between the $500 Dyson hairdryer versus a Conair hairdryer that I picked up from my local Walmart that cost me about $50, Canadian dollars by the way. If you live in the US, you can expect to pay about 400 versus probably like 40. 45. Now, I just gotta say it, I'm a huge fan of the Dyson. I've been using this for about a year now, absolutely love it. And I did do a first impression review of it when I first opened it, so I will link that video for you right now. And I'll leave a link to it in my description box so you can check it out after this video. But that video really gets down to all the technical nitty gritty stuff, the different claims, because it has a lot, the different heat settings, all the attachments. So if you want to see all the details, check that video out. But today I'm honestly just going to talk about all the stuff that I think you guys care about and really that's just how they perform against each other. So if you guys want to see these battle each other out, keep on watching and don't forget to click that subscribe button. I post new videos here every week and make sure to turn on that bell notification right next to my name so you always stay up to date with my channel and you see every time I post. All right, let's get to it. And I tried to be as detailed as possible with this video, so I'm gonna show you the hair dryers for straight hair and then the hair dryers for curly hair like I have right now, and I show you how the diffusers work. But let's get into it. We're gonna start with the Dyson. As you can see, it's super beautiful, very sleek looking. It doesn't even look like a hair dryer. That's the best part. It claims to cut down dry time, which in my case is amazing because I do have long, thick hair. And it is also supposed to prevent extreme heat damage and protect your hair's natural shine. Oh, and one more thing. It also comes with magnetic attachments. How next level is that? And the drugstore hair dryer that I'm comparing it to is the Infinity Pro by Conair. Looks like a regular old hair dryer. Although I'm not gonna lie, the detailing, the gold detailing right here, pretty sharp. This one also claims to be designed for comfort, saying that it's lightweight and well balanced. It also claims to dry your hair up to 50% faster, and it has an ionic technology in it for smooth, shiny hair, cutting frizz by up to 75%, and it is also supposed to prevent heat damage. I read the box pretty well, hey? Now I did try to choose a hair dryer from the drugstore that was pretty similar to, well, as similar as I could get with the same claims, and I think I did a pretty good job because this one has some pretty good ones. Now as for the attachments, the Dyson has three, one for smoothing, one for styling, and a diffuser for curly hair, and the Conair comes with two attachments, one concentrator for versatile pinpoint styling, and one diffuser, again, for curly hair. And finally, before we start, just to discuss wattage in case you guys care about it, the Dyson has 1600 watts and the Conair has 1850 watts. All right, I'm starting off with the Dyson and I'm using it on the medium airflow setting and medium heat setting. There's three options for both and I'm starting the clock. I give my hair about 10 to 15 minutes after the shower before I start blow drying so it's not soaking wet when I start and I made sure to do that for each of these blow dry sessions. Notice how I'm holding the hair dryer by the handle, as you're supposed to, but I do have to give it to the Dyson for how lightweight it is. Now I stop the clock at 3 minutes and 15 seconds because my hair is about 75% dry and this is when I'll move on to round brushing. So I'm just grabbing the styling concentrator, started the clock back up and I started the round brushing process. This smooths and straightens my hair out nicely so I have to do very little work with the flat iron afterwards which I like. 8 minutes and 18 seconds is how long it took to completely dry my hair and smooth it out. I think it looks great, it's super smooth, has a nice shine to it, and I managed to get it pretty darn straight. That's actually one thing I love about round brushing with the Dyson is you usually see great results afterwards. All right, now on to the Conair. I'm starting off on the low speed setting and pushing go. So same thing, I start by rough drawing my hair, but then I notice I had to turn my speed setting up higher because the low just wasn't doing it for me. And notice how my hand has moved to the top and I'm not holding it by the handle anymore. Having the motor in the handle of the Dyson really does make a difference because clearly this one was uncomfortable and too heavy, making me hold it by the top where I find that I do hold most of my hair dryers. I also noticed my hair kept getting way more tangled with the Conair. And at 3 minutes and 40 seconds, my hair is 75% dry, which is not bad compared to the Dyson at 3 minutes 15 seconds. Notice how much harder it is to put on the attachments, not to mention how much more bulky it just became. Alright, let's go. Still holding it by the top and not the handle, but it's still smoothing it out and doing the job. 
The Con Air finished at 9 minutes 41 seconds compared to 8 minutes 18 seconds. Again, not a huge difference, so that's a plus. Now, I find the hair doesn't look as smooth and definitely not as straight because you can see some waves. It doesn't have as much volume or shine, and it actually feels a little bit dry. And you can definitely see that frizzy curl underneath in this shot. Let's look at a side-by-side -side of the two. I think it's clear the Dyson takes it for me because it looks so much more healthy and sleek looking, way more shine. Now on to the curly comparison. I'm going to start with the Conair hair dryer this time, attach that diffuser and start the clock. I flip my hair when I do this because I personally think I get better results when I do it that way. And this happened. My hair kept getting caught in the dryer. I had to keep pushing the hairs away. It kept getting stuck. It was terrible. It sounded terrible. It felt terrible. Uh, but the hair was dry at four minutes and two seconds, which was not bad. Not bad at all. Definitely have some curl. I think it looks pretty good, but the hair getting stuck in the dryer repeatedly really ticked me off. And I'm not seeing as much definition as I'm used to, but overall, pretty good. Now, let's see how the Dyson compares. I attach that nifty magnetic diffuser and start the clock. No hair is getting stuck anywhere this time. And what I always appreciate about the Dyson is how when I use the diffuser, it's not blasting my hair everywhere, creating frizz. And it only took 2 minutes and 45 seconds to dry completely, which is pretty awesome compared to Conair's 4 minutes, 2 seconds. I think it's pretty obvious. I have way more volume and definition, and the hair looks super shiny. When I first looked at it, I thought it was still damp, but I had to make sure it wasn't, and it was actually just that shiny. Let's look at them both side by side. First thing I notice, I definitely need a haircut. Look at those straggly ends, but I think it's clear. Dyson takes it again. It has way more volume. Curls look way more defined, whereas the Conair side just looks wavy and... I think that's all I gotta say about that. Now, when I first started this, because you guys know I love a good drugstore dupe, I like, it's like my mission to find good drugstore dupes for higher end products, but I gotta say that Dyson takes the K for me. It really is a high performance product, and I think that you guys saw that in both of the demos, that the hair done with the Dyson, it just looked better. Now let's talk about it. I know, it is an expensive hair dryer. You might go broke purchasing this hair dryer, or you might be set back in rent money this month, but here's when I say it's worth it to buy the Dyson. If you want smoother, more shiny, healthy looking hair, I totally think it's worth it because it definitely gives it to you. It also has this really nice fullness factor, whereas the Conair didn't. It just looked a little bit more limp, a little bit more flat, kind of stuck to the head, but the Dyson, whoo, that's volume. Now, if you're buying it for the speed, that's when I say I don't think it's worth it because I only noticed about a minute, maybe two minute difference off of my current routine or off of the $50 hair dryer. So that's when I would say I don't think it's it's worth it. I don't think it's going to really make that much of a difference for your current routine and it's definitely not worth 500 bucks for a two minute savings. And that's it. I am so glad that I did that comparison and I will just continue living my life with my Dyson because it's the bomb. Leave me a comment and let me know which hair dryer do you think is worth the money. I really hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you're new and also check out my vlog channel Life with Trina. I'll put a box right here. Click Head over there, subscribe, watch some videos, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!